Welcome back to our next episode of Impact Design. And I'm so pleased uh, to introduce today Lei Kun Tan, who has created an amazing company called Nature Squared. And uh, we will find out all about her inspiring materials right now. Uh, welcome to the episode, and I'll let you introduce yourself. Please start, uh, Lei Kun. Thanks so much, Yasmin. Thank you for the invitation to come and speak. Um, I founded uh, Nature Squared 20 years ago. Um, actually, my background is not at all in design or materials uh, or, or anything that's relevant. Uh, uh, I was previously in, in, in the city, so with a financial background, um, but uh, a, a passion like you uh, for sustainability. So uh, you will recall that 20 years ago, people weren't really into you know, the topic of sustainability at all, right? Um, and people assumed also that if you were interested in it, you know, you must be somehow boring, earnest, lentil eating, and you know, and by the way, I love lentils. Um, but you know, whatever it was, it was it was not going to be luxurious or exciting. So um, with that in mind, we said, okay, let's break a couple of models, you know, uh, let's try and create something new and different that embodied our definition of sustainability, which we said was not just the environmental piece, uh, but also the social piece. Um, and in doing so, what we did was we said we would take sustainable, raw, natural materials uh, from communities that we want to work with, preferably by monetizing their waste, you know, things that they would otherwise be discarding. Uh, we would take that, we would combine it with uh, traditional inlay and weaving skills, but elevate it to a completely different level of, of, of quality and application uh, so that, you know, um, this is eggshell, uh, eggshells could become bathtubs, could become ceilings, could become walling, uh, could be, you know, woven, uh, all sorts of, of completely um, different applications and, and different categories of, 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 of waste. You know, these are, for example, uh, feathers, um, this is waste, bamboo, yeah, a whole range of, of, of vegetal and animal materials. No, that's fantastic. I mean, as you know, I have, we share the passion for materials and especially sustainable materials. And I just love the structures and the different, you know, uh, kind of materials you were showing us. We, I was very interested in your seashell derived smoky blue material. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us the story behind it? Because that's a quite amazing story I find. I think you're talking about this, which is a humble mussel shell. Yes. Um, and uh, it was it's it was really simple. We we try to start, as I said, with the source communities we want to to help. And we found a farm in South Africa where they farm the mussels uh, sustainably. They're a member of the South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative. And of course, uh, you you know, they, they can or they, they bottle the, the, the mussels and these shells are simply discarded. They are actually quite difficult to work with because people are used to, you know, traditional shell inlays where you have thick mother of pearls and, and, and so on. But the next time, you know, you're, you're, you're having your, your bowl of uh, mool and, and you think about the thickness of the shell, this is actually very thin. So, um, it, it took quite a lot of, of R and D, um, and you know this I I as is one of the finished surfaces, and I simply love like you, the depth of the color yeah. that uh, that you get from it, and we've even I don't know if this will work uh, on Zoom, but you know this is inlaid on on yes, glass, very nice, so, so that it's translucent. Um, but, but basically, that's a very good example of, of the, the way we like to work, the model we work with, you know, the community we want to support, what is waste, what would otherwise be discarded anyway, how can we divert it from landfill, what can we transform it into. And, and this has been transformed into everything from light fixtures to, to furniture to, you know, and anything that you can imagine no, within the interior space. It's wonderful. I mean, you know, in, in these episodes, I've interviewed people, I don't know, that you might have seen on, you know, on fashion, where they use also like uh, all waste materials from the ocean. Yeah. 
or 3D yeah. printing from plastic exactly. bottles, which we are working on. So it's really fascinating to see what would be some of the uh, you know sources and materials you would like to talk about how you derive them, how is the process to get them into a real material, and uh, uh, you know like one, one two examples maybe. Mm -hmm. let, let me go back to the eggshell. Um, it's one that is very very close to my heart because it's one that everybody can identify with, right? I mean. And it's so ubiquitous and we eat our breakfast eggs and we throw the shells away without thinking twice about it. Now, um, in, in a developed country like, like, like the UK, of course, we have waste management systems that, that deal with biodegradable waste perfectly well. But where we are based in the Philippines and in many countries in the world, um, waste management is, is, is simply not sufficiently developed. So anything we can divert from landfill is a good thing because, of course, once it goes into landfill, you know, and, and, and it's, a, it, it's, it's a material like this, you get methanization. And of course, methane is 27 times worse as a greenhouse gas than, than, than carbon dioxide. Yeah. Um, and that's an interesting point that not many know. That's very interesting, yeah, what you say, Jeff. I, yeah, yeah I, well, I think, I, I think people know that methane is bad. <laughs> not yeah. how bad. I mean, I, how not bad? Methane, not how bad. Exactly. Too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, for example, this is, you know, something we are very keen to work on right now. This is uh, our traditional um, inlay method. Uh, which is hugely time consuming, very popular with, with designers because of, you know, the, 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 the quite refined aesthetic. Um, but this only uses 2000 eggshells for a square meter. It takes a lot of time, but it only uses 2000 eggshells. This uh, newly, newly, relatively newly developed by us is crushing the eggshells and molding it. And it's not quite as simple as that. It's taken us, you know, some, some time to develop. Mm -hmm. but, but this uses 20,000 eggshells. So that is very much in line with our ethos of coming up with something that, first of all, for, for designers and architects, is a beautiful functional material. So they don't have to compromise on that. But you know, so they get what they want and we get what we want, which is to use more to use more waste and to divert more waste. Yes, no, I think that's the, what we all should look for. And this is what I, you know, we, we do in our research to find more people that are so creative as you who take this waste material and just produce some, something beautifully aesthetically, which is mm. amazing. So leads me to my next question. I mean, you know, we always consider tactility, you know, when developing a new material and rather than just the visual aspect. And this is for me also particularly interesting you know, as a design and architect with very much a focus on multi-sensory design, because I think that's the holistic design approach we have to really get you, you know, like into a space that is totally uh, tuned in with, you know, what, with the message that we have. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this tactility is so important? And also for you, because I can see it, and you plan to implement, you know, maybe our other sensory features in the future for materials, for example, the, you know, examples, olfactory uh, features, I mean, we have worked with scent for quite a long time, but is that anything that has crossed your mind? Um, yeah, you're right about tactility. You know, I, I always say I, I see with my hands. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't know. Yasmin, maybe it's, it's the way I was brought up. You know, my mother was always feeling fabrics. We would go to the cloth shop, she would always feel everything. Um, so yes, to me, that, that stimulation from different sources is, 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 is very important. I, I think even for people who may not think that they operate that way, they do at a, at a subconscious level. Um, so, you know, yes, we, 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 do, we do like to work with a, as much texture as possible, with, with flexibility where possible. Um, and I haven't thought about I hadn't thought about olfactory until you brought it up, and that's really interesting. And now you know that's going to go into my. Well, my I think, uh, you know, we, we should talk about this together because I have done an exhibition. It's very old, in 2005, called Five Plus Sense Hotel. You know, addressing our five senses and five star hotels because at that time, I mean, talking 2005, we're talking like you know, 16 years ago. Yeah. Uh, people were not, you know, like luxury meant gold, brass, and 
And yes. Think that you didn't understand there's a new way of luxury, you know, which is a minimalist luxury and it's very different. But mm. we also uh, did, you know, experiments with uh, putting in fabric through microcapsulation scent with a very famous scent artist who was a friend of mine to kind of have, when you touch materials, you, you activate a scent. And we had one room where we just dedicated to this, you know, to our senses. Uh, actually, we had five rooms, each one dedicated to one of our senses, and one was for scent. And we had like these half spheres. When you would touch them, you would activate a scent. And oh, fascinating. But, and it's done through microcapsulation. It's where by rubbing these little atoms, they open up. You know, it's yeah. microcapsulation. And you yeah. have, and it's not like when you have the perfume kind of scent in magazines where you rub and it's a, it's there but it fades away. This would stay for years and years. I had it printed on my brochure. And uh -huh. uh, we should talk about this because absolutely, think, because absolutely. We, are, we are working on on uh, my kids' playground, which is this <clears throat> new kids' club for hotels and teenagers, for children and teenagers, where for little children, I'm developing like a cube that can be a seat or something else. But by touching the material, you act, you're going to activate like banana, strawberry, apple, because I believe if you trigger these scents, you know, uh, later in life, you will have a choice in healthier food and this can come through memory and when you're a child and you're fun playing and just you know subconsciously you're triggering the healthy scent my theory is that you can and I think materials can you know can be taken in a in a more advanced way than they have today but, but we talk about this later we, we definitely should because I think it's fascinating you know when my daughter was young one of the things I did when when she was I mean you know pre-learning to talk I actually put um, all sorts of smells and tastes in front of her and, you know, made her try it. I, it, it was because, you know, we were living in London and I remember from my childhood in Asia that we had such a rich universe of, of color and scent and smell. And I missed all of that. And I, I tried to, to recreate some of that you know, completely unsuccessfully, but but precisely in a very amateur way, Yasmin, trying to echo, you know, the 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 the, um, the experiential part of, of what you're describing. Yeah, so I absolutely, I, I would love to take that dialogue yeah, further. No, I, I think all the senses are important. In my exhibition, we had just one room for haptics. And uh, the way we did it is like having all different materials because you know materials have structure, they're cold, they're warm, they're soft, they're harsh. So exactly. we wanted to show you had this, you know, all these materials hanging from the ceiling in this pot, and then you can touch it. And you because we have the, you know, as human beings, we have the ability to sense the difference. And I think, you know, especially when you look into a hospitality design or any kind of design, residential or whatever, you want that the materials that you touch make you feel good. And you know, that it's not like uh, harsh, that it's kind of accommodating according to what you are, you know, what you use it for. And I think that's why tactility is so important. And I love the tactility of your materials and, and, and the structure, because I think that, that, you know, that's the beauty of interior design. When you see the structure coming with, you know, the different patterns and the light comes on it and it just, mm. appears, you know, it becomes alive. Mm. Uh, I mean, one of the things we have, uh, we have in mind actually triggered by, by, by doing this. I don't oh, know if you can amazing. see, but that is actually, it's a nut that we've cut through. Amazing, I love it. And, and that's because um, we were trying to come up with something for acoustic paneling. Uh, another big, important aspect. Yeah, because a, a, a designer friend was, was moaning about, you know, lack of attractive Absolutely. acoustic paneling. So at that point, I said, well, I, I don't know, not sure I can help, but what we can do is, you know, use natural holes yes. and, and, and back it with an acoustic fabric. Yeah, exactly. um, so, so, so we did that. And then, you know, just the fact that you have holes and, yeah. and that they have these natural contours, you know, I've observed that people like then just picking up, picking it up and playing with it. Yeah. Uh, and and it, it, it actually brings a, a different level of curiosity to it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so from that, we've, we've then, it's very, very embryonic thought at the moment, but we've wondered because we have all these natural fibers as well. Yes. yes. You know, we've thought about, well, what could we do with these fibers? Maybe we could go in 
some form of acoustic direction. But of course, it's a very heavily populated space. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that we would bring anything new I to it. Uh, technically. I, I, think it's, I think it's very interesting. I mean, as I understand, you are more, you are targeting the upscale market, you know, so we are, you know, I'm a lot working also in the luxury sector. So the upscale hotel brands, I think it would be fantastic because if I see, you know, I could even see it as a division element or something where you have some, you know, some kind of visual, uh, you know, connection to the, to the other space. But uh, having acoustic uh, qualities in materials is very important because we see in so many restaurants today or public spaces that it's hard to, to talk because there's all this noise around us. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something where, you know, new materials can come in definitely. And, and because there, there's a lot of traditional material, which is very boring, which is what you've always seen, which makes you also feel too much like an office interior, you know, and you yes. get that into a, a hotel space, for example, or a I residence space. Right. Yeah, you're right, because um, I, I did work, uh, we do some work in the hospitality industry and, and, and uh, as well as the, the residential market, um, and also some in, in cruise ships, because, you know, m most of our work until quite recently was in, you know, the, the, the super yachts, the, 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 the jets, the, the villas and so on. Um, but actually I was talking to an art consultant and we ended up for a, a, a hotel space on, on a cruise ship, so quite a large space. Um, and we actually ended up putting in weave as artwork you know, a, a, a customized weave pattern because the, the, the issue was one, of course, the sound uh, yes. impact that you 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 describe, uh, but the other was that they had they had problems with um, flammability regulations with with so called IMO certification, yes. and that is something because of our super yacht background, uh, we are we have invested heavily in the R and D so that almost all our materials come with IMO Part Two and Five certification. Uh, proper, you know, compound layer certification. So for 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 the cruise uh, company, it was it, it ticked many boxes. Yeah. So you know the 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 the, the, the technical one, the sound one, and the aesthetic one. Absolutely. Um, I think it's you. You know, it's up to the creativity of a designer to see their purpose of how you can, you know, how you can take something that has a functionality, but it, you can expose it if it's as beautiful as your materials, and to make a feature out of it. Because yeah. that becomes artistic. I, I love that. You know, I've done this many times. I think it's a great idea. Well, so, it, it, take, it takes design talent, Yasmin. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you would be brimming with ideas. And, you know, it's, uh, I, it's, um, it's, a, it's a conversation we should continue to have. Absolutely. We will. <laughs> but our, our last question, which I ask everyone, what is the impact you like to have on design, you know, in what you are doing? The impact I would like to have? Um, I think just to provide choice mm -hmm. and choice that it, that can be freely freely exercised. In other words, it's it's not about I'd like to take this because it's virtuous, but I'm compromising my design intent or or, or, or my architectural structure. You know, I think I would like to say, listen, you you can have your cake and eat it. Of course, not endlessly. Um, Yasmin, but you know, to a large extent, you 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 can have have your cake and eat it. Um, I I was talking to a, a designer friend the other day, and she was relating to me a, a conversation that she had had with another designer, where they said, "Oh, we love Nature Squared stuff, but we didn't know that it was sustainable." Oh, and <laughs> At that point, Yasmin, I thought, gosh, I have really, really failed. <laughs> well, this is what we do here. We're going to, you know, we're going to expose you now to for sustainability. I mean, that's my first, you know, that's where we start searching for. That's how I found you, actually. Yeah. Because we look for the, you know, it's not just the material. We look for a factor that has something about sustainability or repurposed material. And that's why I think it's fantastic. But I, I, I do think, and I would probably, uh, you probably agree that, the younger generation uh, is becoming much more concerned about the environment oh, and yeah. they're looking more. And also, you know, I had some fantastic designers here on our episodes who work with seaweed and, and they are just yes. sometimes very young, you know, uh, students or just graduates from school and are seeing the demand for it. And I think, 
it's it's fantastic. So you definitely have to push that more that you have these amazing sustainable materials. And it's not just beauty, it's more than that. Well, thank you so much for, for you know the interview. It was fantastic. And I, I look forward to a collaboration with you. Thank you. Absolutely, me too. Thanks so much, Yasmin. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Lei Kuntan and her materials and her search to make materials more sustainable and taking waste from, you know, from that could go into landfill and repurposes into these beautiful um, different structured uh, surfaces that she created. And see you next week again. Thank you. Bye.